Uh, my name is Sean Devaney. I'm the uh, Vice President uh, for Strategy in our Banking and Financial Markets team for CGI. For me, uh, there are two different types of CBDC. Um, so whether we're talking about retail or whether we're talking about wholesale. If you look at wholesale, the use case is very simple. You look at some benefits around international trade, they're, they're fairly clear and, uh, and well understood. If you start looking at retail, um, where, um, which is the direction that um, the uh, digital euro is going and the digital pound potentially uh, might be going, um, some of those use cases are a little less clear. So I think mostly it's about the idea of uh, continuing to be able to implement monetary policy through a digital currency um, and avoid the idea of stable coins and other alternative uh, currencies um, taking over from that monetary policy uh, point of view. So from CGI's point of view, I think we are, we are supportive of the idea of a central bank digital currency. But I think, the, uh, I think some of the fundamentals at, uh, at its base need to, be, need to be agreed before we start looking at technologies, etc. I think there are some uh, questions around uh, fundamentally what is it for that I think really need to be answered uh, before we start talking about technology. So uh, one of the challenges with central bank digital currencies is the potential for um, depositors to move funds away from commercial banks into uh, central banks, into their central bank digital currency. Um, there's some challenges if that happens. You know, growth in your economy, typically in a Western economy, is driven by the idea that commercial banks are able to lend a multiple of what they have on deposit. Um, if all, the, if all the depositors' money moves away from commercial banks into central bank digital currencies, that's a real problem for commercial banks. Now, I think there are some ways in which you can stop that flight away from commercial bank money happening, uh, depending on how you design your central bank digital currency. So, is it an interest-bearing thing? Um, is it going to grow over time? Is it um, functionally the same as, uh, does it give you the same functionality as you would have in a commercial bank uh, money? Um, does it allow you to do all the things that you can do with commercial bank money? Or does it do something slightly different? Is it treated a bit more like cash? You know, could you as a retail customer uh, be limited in what's the maximum size of transaction you can do in a central bank digital currency? Um, if it hasn't got any interest, uh, if it doesn't bear any interest, then it's probably more of a transactional um, uh, currency than a store of value currency. So I think there are some ways that we can guard against that flight away from commercial bank money, but it does depend on how those CBDCs are designed in the first place. So um, I think there are some real challenges um, uh, in the debate about central bank digital currencies at the moment. And one of them is anonymity versus privacy. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's a really, it's, it's not a clear distinction in a lot of people's minds uh, whether something is anonymous or whether it's private. So um, a good analogy would be um, uh, something is, uh, a transaction is private if the transaction in the middle is uh, hidden, uh, is uh, encrypted in some way. A transaction is anonymous if the people doing the transaction are hidden in some way, right, and, 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 and not visible. I think there is a real difference between some of the debate that's happening at the moment about uh, privacy in CBDC versus anonymity in, the, uh, in central bank digital currencies. For me, building a digital currency that is anonymous at its base, right, at, at its fundamental level, I think is key, because it's impossible to add anonymity afterwards. You can't add a layer of anonymity uh, on top. That's just privacy. It's not an anonymity. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, I think, has, has, has really shown that. Uh, Bitcoin, in theory, completely anonymous, uh, but actually um, it's been proven now by various law enforcement agencies that you can trace transactions through, through, through Bitcoin. So I think building a, building a digital currency that is truly anonymous at its heart is key to uh, uh, an a good implementation of CBDC. And then adding things on top of that so that you can do things like guard against fraud, guard against AML, uh, sorry, guard against AML, uh, guard against money laundering uh, solutions, uh, guard against tax evasion, etc. That can all be layered on on top, but you can't go the other way around. You can't have a, a non-anonymous token uh, and then layer anonymity on, on top.